and welcome to another Giant Slayer TFT Top 5 Countdown video. Today our analysts will be listing the top 5 compositions for patch 1111. Due to the shop rate, changes were now in a meta dominated by rerolling at level 6 and 7. Because of that, expect to see a lot of today's compositions centered around that style of play. Keep in mind the meta may shift over time, so expect to see each of these compositions rise and fall over the course of the patch. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come. Be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. Starting off our top five, we have Spell Weavers coming in at number five. Spell Weavers, like a lot of our compositions today, have several viable variations. At the core, you have the two main carries to consider, Brand and Velkaz. Brand-focused boards lean into the reroll aspect of the meta as he's a two-cost, meaning you can stay at level six and usually three-star him. Belkaz, on the other hand, is played off of strong early games because running him as a one-star is not all that viable anymore. You have to be in a position to two-star him to play Velkaz effectively. Let's begin with the two main variations of Brand. The most common is going to be Cavalier Spellweaver, which rerolls for both Hecarim and Brand. The core of the build generally ends up with four Cavaliers as the front line, with four Spellweavers as the back line. The game plan for this composition is to hit level 6 and reroll for Brand, Hecarim, Victor, and Sejuani. This is because all of them are two cost units, so you naturally will hit them by slow rolling. For any variation of Brand, items are important. Blue buff is essential as it allows Brand to cast constantly since his max mana is 20. After that, get some type of damage items such as Jeweled Gauntlet or Death Cap. Lastly, it's not uncommon to run Hextech Gunblade or the Shadow Variation. The Shadow Variation of Gunblade turns Bran into a healer as his constant damage acts like a heal over time. Overall, what's most important is blue buff with a damage item. The other composition that you can reroll Bran in is with Abomination Brawler, which mostly focuses on hitting Bran 3. It's not as common because Abomination is one of the strongest openings you can have for a mid-game Velkaz board. Abomination received several buffs this patch, plus Brawlers are doing well as frontline during Stage 2, 3, and most of 4. This makes for an easy transition into Velkaz. One other way to play Velkaz is from a Hellion opening, though you do need to open with items like Shoujin and Jeweled Gauntlet, so this won't happen as often. But using the strength of early game Hellions, you can easily hit level 8 and pivot into Velkaz. Just be sure to have the correct items. As for what composition to play around Velkaz, it can really be anything as long as you've got a solid frontline and utility to back him up, such as Invoker and Mystic. All in all, Spellweavers aren't the strongest build, but they are doing well in this reroll meta, and Velkaz is still playable late game. Let's move on to the composition coming in at number 4, Assassins. Assassins continues to be a mainstay of the meta despite repeated attempts at nerfing LeBlanc. The strength of Assassins in the current meta revolves around having three viable carries, all of which you can two-star with slow rolling. Blanc is likely the weakest of the three after the amount of nurse she received, so generally she is used as a secondary damage dealer or utility. What determines whether you play Nocturne or Katarina as the main carry is all about items. Both Katarina and LeBlanc thrive with blue buff, though dark blue buff is much better on LeBlanc. They both want Shadow Infinity Edge and Shadow Guardian Angel, so you can play either as the carry. It really just depends on whether you want to roll on 6 for LeBlanc or 7 for Katarina. In either case, the core of the composition will be the same with 4 Assassin and 3 Coven. The additional champions at level 7 and 8 can be units like Rise, Ivern, Volibear, and Garen. Basically add in what you need, whether that's utility from Mystic, damage from Forgotten, or extra frontline. Nocturne, on the other hand, uses widely different items than the other two Assassins. As Nocturne has built-in healing, you'll want to give him as much damage as possible, and in addition, you want some attack speed too. Infinity Edge is by far the best item to give him as it greatly increases his damage done. Try to avoid Shadow Infinity Edge as his healing won't always be enough to offset the damage taken. Runins is also quite popular on Nocturne, more so than Rageblade. While Rageblade does ramp up his attack speed, you want fights to end quickly with Assassins. Both variations of the item are good, though Shadow Runins will synergize better with Infinity Edge. Lastly, you can always look to give him increased survivability with Bloodthirster or defensive item like Quicksilver. As for the composition when playing Nocturne, you definitely want at least 4 Assassin with Ivern and Volibear for Revenant. The most common board at level 8 is going to be 6 Assassin with 3 Revenant. Katarina, LeBlanc, and Viego can all be used as a secondary damage dealer, though it's common to see the first two used since you'll be re-rolling for Nocturne already. 
Overall, Assassins are one of the strongest mid-game compositions that struggle once the top four has been established, as positioning against Assassins is quite easy to do. But a strong mid-game can easily lead you to a top four, and perhaps even a top two. Up next, we have Legionnaire coming in as the number three composition. Legionnaire has a lot of flexibility in the current meta because it has three main carries. Those are Riven, Yasuo, and Draven. Plus, Mordekaiser serves well enough as a main damage dealer if necessary, though he's usually seen as a frontliner. Both Riven and Yasuo are played in reroll compositions while Draven is played standard. Draven can be a bit difficult to make work in the current meta, so high rolling Draven 2 at 7 is the best way to transition into him as the carry. Not much has changed in regards to Draven boards, so let's focus on Riven and Yasuo instead. Riven has been buffed multiple times over several patches, so it's not a surprise to see that she's finally risen to the role of carry. The main reason why she's viable is how well she can survive while also dealing damage. With both Dawnbringer and Legionnaire, she has a ton of innate healing in her kit, meaning you can focus your items on damage. Infinity Edge or Deathblade are ideal to maximize her damage output along with Shadow Runins. Bloodthirster is viable, but keep in mind she already heals a lot due to her traits. The goal when playing Riven is to hit level 7 and slow roll for Riven 3. Which composition you play can vary as there's multiple paths that you can take. Or Dawnbringer with four Legionnaires is easy to fit in at level 7 and requires the least amount of effort. Extreme variations of those two include six Legionnaire or six Dawnbringer. An interesting Riven composition has popped up using Abomination alongside a Riven. Because Callista provides you with Legionnaire, you also gain a strong frontline and the monstrosity can help clean up at the end of the fight. Overall, the idea behind Riven is to tag in at least two of each of her trait and fill in the rest as needed. As long as you hit Riven 3 with good items, she can carry well, plus her early game is fantastic. Yasuo is essentially the same as in previous metas where you re-roll at level 7 for Yasuo 3 with a mix of Nightbringer and Legionnaire. What you mainly need to worry about is items for Yasuo as he wants a regular Runins, a damage item like Jeweled Gauntlet, and utility such as RFC or Quicksilver. The main issue with Yasuo and Riven is that you can't commit to both as they use different items which you end up playing ends up being determined by whether or not you make an early runins or a shadow runins. That said, both are viable carries with strong early games, so committing to them during stage 3 is not all that uncommon. For a more general approach to the game, Draven is the default choice after level 7. Next, we have Hellion Invoker coming in at number 2. Funnily enough, despite being in a reroll meta, you won't be rerolling for Hellions even though the trait was basically designed around that premise. Instead, you want to use the early game Strength of Hellions to propel you into the mid game, preferably with a fast level 8. The Strength of Hellions is due to how easily you can hit 5 of them early game, plus the carry potential of both Kennen and Ziggs. Ziggs can use a plethora of items with Static Shiv being hands down the best way to win early rounds with Hellions. Kennen, especially in early Kennen 2, will be what secures you a fast level 8 as he's way overtuned for a 2 cost champion. Give him a Guardian Angel and Umbrella Nomicon, and he'll be relevant for practically the entire game. From the early game, the goal is to build up your economy to fast 8 sometime around 4-5. At that point, you should have at least 30 gold and above 60 health thanks to the early game of Hellions. Now, from this point, you have several options. The main goal will be to transfer your Ziggs items over to Teemo. After that, you can continue to play 5 Hellions with utility champions like Ivern, Volibear, and Kindred, or drop down to 3 Hellions to add in more Invokers. If you're rolling on 8 and not finding Teemo, you can always pivot towards a Karma Comp, but only do that if you have a blue buff on your Ziggs. Shojin and Static Shiv are better suited for Heimerdinger. Other options include pivoting into a Vel'Koz board and in a rare case, doing a hard transition into Kale if you find her and Frontline. Basically, you can play most AP compositions from a Hellion opening with Kale's an outlier since she's not all that item dependent. Keep in mind to play Hellions, you need a good early game, meaning you want 5 Hellions with Ziggs 2 and Kennen 2. If you're not hitting them by Krugs, pivot into a different board. But if you do find them early, they are by far one of the best opening boards. And now for the number one composition of patch 1111, we have Draconic. Draconic is not so much a particular composition, more so a way to snowball the mid game into whatever you want to run in the late game. There's three main reasons for this. First, the shop rates at level 6 made finding 2 costs very easy, so you can hit set 3 really fast. Second, 4 brawlers are likely the best early and mid game frontline, especially if you hit Nunu 2 during stage 3. And lastly, they made it more likely for champions to drop from early PvE rounds, meaning the chances of hitting Draconic by 2-1 are a lot higher than in previous patches. 
The last reason is huge for Draconic because having the trait active on 2-1 is the best case scenario and gives you the most value. Winning during Stage 2 may be difficult, but the snowball you get from a 4 Brawler and Draconic board in Stage 3 and 4 makes up for it. Once you hit level 6, you can begin rerolling for set 3, which will happen quickly in conjunction with the Draconic Eggs. Once you hit set 3, you can either continue looking for Ash 3 or play for a fast level 9 and add in whatever you want. Common transitions are Heimerdinger or Teemo, Volibear with Ivern, or sticking with Ash as the secondary carry. We do want to make it clear that Draconic is not something that you want to force past stage 2. The point of using Draconic is a snowball from having the Draconic active early on in Stage 2. Without that early snowball, you're better off pivoting into a different comp. That said, it is by far the most snowball-y composition if you get it up and running early. And that's all for our top 5 compositions for Patch 11.11. But before we go, we have a few honorable mentions to cover. Our first honorable mention is Aphelios. Aphelios didn't receive much in Patch 11.11 with just a 5 attack damage buff but he's reached a point in the meta where you can play him as a carry either with 4 Rangers or 6 Nightbringer. The issue is hitting Aphelios 2 early enough in Stage 4 so that you can extend his value as he will drop off the later the game goes as other carries will just do more consistent damage than him. Thus, he's not the most consistent of carries, but he is at least playable. Next up, we have a composition we briefly mentioned, Kale. Kale took a hit on this patch with nerfs to her health and 6 Knights. She's still viable in the late game if you can pivot into her, but doing so requires you to high roll an early Kale, preferably on level 7. In addition to that, you must upgrade your frontline, otherwise you're going to get rolled over. Lastly, for our honorable mentions, we want to give a nod to all of the other reroll builds that are playable. There's Varus 3, Skirmisher, Soraka Coven, and even Vayne can be played along with several other comps. None of these builds are as consistent as the top 5, but we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the presence of all the playable reroll builds. That's going to be it for today's video, folks. It's a reroll meta, so enjoy going out and pressing the D key on level 6 and 7. Let us know in the comment section below which compositions you're having the most success with in your ranked climb. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.